in this video, I'm not just going to tell you if it works or doesn't work. We're getting into the science, the gear, time schedules, and the big question of if you've been missing out on quality and yield this entire time. Hi, I'm Chad Westport. I've been involved with cannabis for over 30 years. I'm a graduate of SVC at WSU, where I studied sustainable agriculture and small farm systems. Commercially, I've worked at the largest indoor facility in our state, and I've consulted with our legislatures on the medicinal cannabis program. My background and training give me the experience to easily guide new growers through the home cannabis growing process. It's easier than you think and far more rewarding than unloved, mass-produced, chemically treated commercial cannabis. Enter the Woo, Westport University. Nobody likes airy larfy buds, not to smoke them and definitely not to trim them. Larf feels like such a waste of your time and of your plant's potential. Trimming that stuff is the only time I actually curse at this plant. Now, most indoor growers remove the lower branches so that they don't have to deal with the weak and larfy buds later. But today there is cannabis underlighting technology, which has promised to change all of that with claims of 30 to 40% greater yields. But what's really going on here? why your lower canopy is dying on the vine. So before we fix the problem, let's get on the same page about why it's happening. It all comes down to the simple fact that light is energy. And for a cannabis plant, light is life. Your main light, whether it's an HPS or LED, it does a great job of blasting the top of your canopy with all the energy it needs. But light intensity drops off quickly based on your distance from the light source. It's called the inverse square law. By the time overhead light struggles down through the top fan leaves to the bottom third of your plant, it's basically living in the dark down there. Those lower branches and bud sites just aren't getting enough juice to do their job at full capacity. The result is what we all hate. Popcorn buds, small, loose, and totally lacking the density and bag appeal of the upper buds. For years, the advice was just to lollipop your plants. Basically, strip off all of that lower growth in late veg, and then again in early flower, so that the plant doesn't waste energy on it. Now, under canopy lighting is reportedly changing the whole game. Instead of trimming that growth away, the idea is to power it up with light. How underlighting wakes up your plants. The way that this works is surprisingly simple, but remember, under canopy lighting is supplemental. You're not replacing your top light, you're adding to it. And this method works by placing fixtures below the canopy shining upwards. The light illuminates all of those lower bud sites that, until now, have been living in the shadows. A common question that I get is, can the bottom leaves even use light? And the answer is yes. While the top side is way more efficient than the underside, the underside is perfectly capable of photosynthesis. When you shine a light from below, you're basically turning on a whole set of dormant solar panels all over your plant. Those lower leaves that were just draining energy suddenly start fueling better growth in the bottom half of the plant. This isn't just bro science. It's backed up by real data, but I will say there isn't a mountain of documentation, particularly when it comes to cannabis. So aside from white papers that are funded by lighting companies, the most frequently quoted research paper on the topic seems to be the 2018 paper titled Improving Cannabis Bug Quality and Yield with Subcanopy Lighting. The research was conducted by a university in Canada, and the lead name on the paper is Dave Hawley, PhD. Dave Hawley now works for Fluence Lighting Company, one of the leaders in under-canopy lighting equipment. Coincidence? Chicken before the egg? 
who knows? But we can skip to the good parts in the study here, which I've already highlighted. Now, the name of the paper is, again, Improving Cannabis Bug Quality and Yield with Subcanopy Lighting. This study found some interesting results of how this additional lighting influences secondary metabolites, such as cannabinoids and terpenes. It definitely produced an impact, and I'll link the study in the show notes for you to discover that on your own. As it says in the highlighted text, the objective of this study was to evaluate bud yield as well as cannabinoid and terpene contents when plants were grown with no SCL, aka subcanopy lighting, red blue SCL, or RGB, which is red, green, blue SCL. The next highlighted section points out that the control group without the under canopy lighting received less overall PPFD, so less usable light. But that shouldn't come as a surprise. This next yellow section reads that the disproportionate increase in yield via SCL may be explained by improved light distribution and penetration into the lower canopy than what would be available by simply increasing overhead PPFD. Essentially, that is saying, if you added 100 watts of light above the canopy, it wouldn't have the same benefit on the under canopy buds as 100 watts added as sub canopy lighting. It goes on to say that the lower leaves with reduced photosynthesis from low levels of light penetration start to perform better when exposed to the much closer under canopy lighting source. They did this test for two runs, and the next yellow section points out a few differences between the two runs that may have influenced the outcome. And this is an excellent example of why what we read in studies doesn't always translate to us in our grow environments. There are always fluctuation of parameters in our gardens, and conditions aren't common, commonly identical run after run after run but I digress. The remaining highlights are interesting notes about the results, specifically between the secondary metabolite levels of the upper canopy versus the lower canopy when SEL is involved. But let's skip to the conclusion section. It says, the results suggest that supplemental SEL can increase bud yield and modify cannabis and terpene profiles. The increase in bud yield is likely a product of greater PPFD compared with production using overhead lighting alone. So again, all of this research aside from the secondary metabolic findings is saying that if we add more light, we get a better yield. Duh. Hey, if you're finding this useful, do me a quick favor and please hit the subscribe or share button really helps the channel out and tells YouTube that you're digging the content. It's free and it means a ton to me. So, okay, let's get into the gear that you'll need. Your underlighting shopping list. If you're thinking you may want to give this a shot, the following is what you should be looking for. Many of the new LED single strip lights are perfect for this. They're super efficient, they run cool, and they're slim. Now, you want to buy an LED. You absolutely should not stick a hot HPS or metal halide bulb under your plants in a grow tent. You will torch them, and guys, you're creating a fire hazard. Don't do it. So, LEDs are what make under lighting safe and practical for us home growers. Get an LED. Second though, and this is non-negotiable, they have to be waterproof. Your tent is a humid place. You're watering, there's condensation. The last thing you want is an electrical fire. So look for lights with at least an IP65 rating. That means they're sealed up tight and safe from water. Don't skip this step. Third, think about the light spectrum. The simplest and safest bet is a full, spe a full spectrum or broad spectrum white light. This gives the lower canopy the same kind of light spectrum that the top is getting. 
So there are a few studies like the one I mentioned earlier that look at different combinations, including blue-red and blue-green-red, but using a full spectrum LED light bar is a more reliable choice, especially when you're starting out. A step-by-step -step installation guide. The most common way for small tent growers to use under canopy lighting is to simply lay the light bars on the floor or on the lip of the pots. Now, most of these lights are built slim, so they fit between your plants no matter how crowded they are without any issue. Y'all have seen my tents. So another thing you could do is you could also hang them using ratchet ropes, or you could create small light stands like the ones used for under canopy lighting in commercial grows. One thing that home growers may notice is that the cord on the LED strips is too short if you've correctly placed your power strip up high off of the ground. You can get around that though. But another hindrance can be that with the added underlighting bars, all of the slots on your power strip are now full. And with all of these cords, please take a minute to manage your cables. Keep the wires tidy, keep them up off the floor, and keep them away from where you water. Make sure you don't trip on them or snag them. Make sure all the connections are solid. Every grower should want a clean setup that's safe and easy to work around. The goal with this lighting is to get nice, even coverage on the whole underside of the canopy. If you have a few bars, space them out. Keep the lights at least 3 inches or about 7.5 centimeters away from any part of the plant. Even though LEDs run cool, they can still bleach or burn leaves and the buds too if the light intensity is high enough. When and how much? I get these questions a lot. When do I turn my underlighting on and how bright or powerful should they be? Well. Don't use underlighting on seedlings or young vegging plants. They're programmed to stretch upward towards one light source, and lighting from below can confuse them and cause some pretty weird growth. The perfect time to switch on your underlights is at the start of the third week of flower. The big initial stretch phase is mostly over. The plant structure is essentially set, and the bud sites are just starting to form that's when you want to start feeding your plants at extra light from below. However, there are some growers who use under canopy lighting in the veg cycle as well. Now for intensity. The common wattages for under canopy lighting are 100 watts or 120 watt light fixtures. Don't blast your plants with 100% power on the first day. That's a recipe for stress. Start low. For the first few days to a week, run the lights at about 25 or 30% power. Just watch your plants. If they look happy, no curling, no bleaching, no stress, you could start bumping the light intensity up by about 10% every other day. The goal is to get to full power over a week or two. This kind of lets your plants ease into its new high energy environment. And if your lights don't actually have dimmers on them, you can use distance as a way of controlling the intensity they're receiving. Managing your new high performance grow. Putting in under canopy lighting isn't a set it and forget it type of deal. By adding the additional light, you've just supercharged your grow. So you need to adjust a few things to keep up with the new demands. First off, your plants are going to get thirsty and hungry quicker. More light means more photosynthesis, which means a faster metabolism. So keep a close eye out for any nutrient issues and be ready to feed them a little more to keep up with their new appetite. Second, you're adding more light and growing more plant matter, which means an increase in trapped heat and humidity. So good, air <laughs> good airflow is now more important than ever to stop mold from taking hold. You might need to add a small fan pointed at the lower canopy and crank up your exhaust fan a bit to keep the air moving. I recommend monitoring temperature below the canopy as well as above the canopy in an effort to detect and avoid microclimates within your grow tent. So temperature and humidity, keep an eye on those. 
And finally, you get to change how you prune. With underlights, you don't need to do that crazy aggressive lollipopping anymore. You don't have to strip the whole bottom of the plant bare. You'll still want to do some strategic defoliation, tucking, or removing a few big fan leaves here and there that maybe are directly blocking light from a nice looking bug site. But you no longer need to remove entire branches unless you need better airflow. My conclusion. So is under canopy lighting actually worth it for commercial growers? Yeah, it can be. With more light, you can add biomass to flowers. Under canopy lighting can turn B buds on the bottom into A buds. And if you aren't familiar, these are grades given to the visual appearance and density of buds that are destined for the retail market. So A buds get top dollar, while B buds might fetch only 30% of the A buds price, if at all. And commercial growers are financially motivated and the reported returns so far have outpaced the cost to run the underlighting. So to be continued, but it looks so far pretty good for them. But my years of agricultural experience flashes back about a decade ago to the vertical farming model that was set to revolutionize indoor agriculture. Billions of dollars were invested, but vertical farming was greatly derailed by microclimates created by the vertical design. So by having lights at multiple levels in the cultivation space, additional resources like air conditioning and dehumidifiers were needed to maintain the proper growing environment at each level. But guys, we're not commercial growers or traditional agriculture. We're home growers. Personally, I did see an increase in the size of my lower buds when I used this style of lighting, but the additional yield wasn't mind blowing. It quickly became a pain for me to try and maneuver around the light strips between the plants when I needed to water or defoliate the back of the tent. The additional light was also pretty blinding because when you're working in your tent, because the light is aimed upwards, it's always shining right in your eyes. And in the end, I produce enough flour to get me by, so I didn't continue using the under lighting. Now I want to hear from you. Have you tried under canopy lighting? What were your results? What size of tent are you in? Are you thinking about adding under canopy lighting? Drop your questions, your experiences, and your results in the comments. Let's help each other dial in our grows, guys. You can find my gear and merch at chadwestport.com. Keep it locked here on Chad Westport YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next Westport University video. But more importantly, everybody, please remember to party on. Oh.